This is Making a Difference on 97.1 FM, The Drive. Here's your host, Kathy Voltmer. Good morning and welcome to the Making a Difference program, the show where we shine a spotlight on the people and the organizations making a difference in our community. Our guests today are great friends of mine and great friends of The Drive. They represent an organization and a cause near and dear to our hearts. The very first event The Drive ever sponsored as a brand new radio station 15 years ago was the Angels in the Fairway golf outing, supporting the Joey's Angels chapter of the Leukemia Research Foundation. The annual outing's coming up again July 29th, so we thought it would be a great chance to get everybody in the studio to talk more about the outing, its great success over the years, and the wonderful work of the Leukemia Research Foundation. Joining us today, Larry Mix, who is president of the Joey's Angels chapter of the LRF. He's also the president of the board of directors of the Leukemia Research Foundation. His wife, Patty Mix, vice president of the Joey's Angels chapter of the LRF, will join us shortly as well. Also in the studio with us this morning is Kevin Radelet, executive director of LRF. Welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Kathy. Kathy. The DRIVE's involvement with Leukemia Research Foundation dates back 15 years, uh, but the LRF has a much longer history than that. Kevin, maybe you can give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of how it started. Absolutely. The Leukemia Research Foundation is Chicago born and bred. It was started in 1946 by a family who had lost a relative uh, to leukemia, and at that time there was no chance for survival of any blood cancers. But the family went to the doctors and said, what can we do? So the doctors suggested that the family raise money for research, and that they did. They went out on the street corners with the little cans and collected money, and they raised about $1,500 that first year, which in 1946 was certainly a lot of money. And that's how the organization started. And it's uh, interesting that in many ways the organization still operates that way, where we have 24 chapters that operate throughout Chicago, and they all do events uh, in memory and tribute to someone who may have passed away from blood cancers or survivors themselves. And they do all this uh, to help support medical research on a worldwide basis. I think it's amazing how much you have grown since 1946. Tell us what an incredible success story the Leukemia Research Foundation has become. Well, it truly has. This past year, we just finished our physical year at the end of the June, and we've raised well over $2.5 million, which is uh, the second highest total that we've had in, in 70 years. But really, just over the past 10 or 15 years, we've become very much more consistent with our fundraising activities and been able to fund that much more research. And we've also become uh, much more sophisticated in the research that we're funding, where we will fund new investments investigators only, which are researchers, again, anywhere in the world who are really just starting out their research. They're on to something, uh, but they need a bridge. We fund them for $100,000 over the course of one year to bridge their projects so that they can qualify for larger funding, perhaps for the National Institutes of Health, the National Cancer Institute, or other larger organizations to really take their project to the next level and hopefully uh, lead us to uh, the, the true cures and and causes, really, for all blood cancers. Yeah, you you mentioned all blood cancers. You're still named the Leukemia Research Foundation, but I know your mission has expanded over the years. I mean, we're not medical doctors here, but please tell us a little bit about the blood cancers that you help fight. And uh, there's a lot of complex names that are involved, but if you could just tell us, because we've all heard a lot about leukemia, but maybe some of the other ones we don't know so much about. Well, you're right. Again, we have such a a long history with Leukemia Research Foundation that we... uh we have focused on leukemia for a number of years, but over the past 10, 15 years or so, we have started to fund more in the areas of lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and myelodysplasia, which are related blood cancers, because uh, we're feeding the lake. We're a tributary that we're feeding the lake, trying to find cures to all blood cancers. And as you might imagine, they're not hard tumors when it comes to blood cancers, uh, so they are very closely related, and we're finding more and more Um, projects that we're funding that might, in fact, be looking for cures to leukemia, yet they hit on something that might be more applicable to lymphoma. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, widened the scope a little bit where we are funding all blood cancers, but because we had such great equity, particularly here in Chicago with our name recognition, we did maintain the Leukemia Research Foundation name. 
How many people does leukemia and the other blood cancers you mentioned touch every year? Well, nationwide, there's about 172,000 people that will be diagnosed with one type of blood cancer here in this coming year. There's about a million two that are currently living with a diagnosis, and unfortunately, about 60,000 of those people will, will die this year because of complications from blood cancer. And when you bring that down to the Chicago area, in our 11-county area, uh, there's about 4,500 people that will be newly diagnosed this year, and more than 32,000 are currently living with the disease. So it is widespread. Um, leukemia itself is the number one killer by disease in children under the age of 21. Um, but we're also finding that the five-year survival rate for children's pediatric leukemia is um, upwards of 90%, mm -hmm. which is encouraging because if you can get that kind of success with one type of blood cancer, then logic would tell you that other blood cancers and success could follow right along with that in the future years. Those numbers are really staggering when you think about it. You said 172,000 nationwide will be diagnosed this year. 1.2 million are living with it in, in the Chicago area. 4,500 will be diagnosed this year. 32,000 will be living with it. That's a lot of individual stories. So many compelling and sad individual stories. So many people that we know have been touched by leukemia and other blood cancers. In, in 2013, one of the Drive's longtime DJs, uh, Carla Leonardo, lost her uh, battle with leukemia. And in uh, 2014, my wife's cousin Kathy passed away after a six-year battle with leukemia. The disease hits very close to home for me and for so many others. And so many people who have been affected have decided to try to make, I guess, the best example is lemonade out of lemons, taking some of the struggles that they've had and their families have had and try to do something in the fight against blood cancers. And two of the most remarkable people that I know uh, are, are perfect examples of this. Uh, Larry Mix and his wife Patty were touched uh, very deeply years ago by a loss from leukemia, and it inspired them to start their Leukemia Research Foundation chapter uh, Larry and Patty are here this morning, and uh, we've known each other for many, many years now. But uh, for the folks who don't know, maybe you can tell us the story of how your chapter started and, and the story of your son, Joey. Well, okay, Kath, thank you. Um, well, Joey was three, actually, and, and went in for his three-year-old checkup and um, got some funny uh, blood counts in, in, his, in his blood work. And uh, they, they sent us to another, uh, another clinic to... Um, to, to, to test it again and um, and then still came back with some funny counts is what they kind of told us so they sent us to uh, Luton General Hospital to uh, have it done at the hospital and again had some funny counts and they came in and told us well we're gonna we're gonna have to do a, a bone marrow biopsy to kind of rule out leukemia and we said rule out leukemia I mean the kid hadn't been sick in, in three years might have had one ear infection in, in the three years that that uh, you know he, he grew up and uh, we were just shocked and uh, I still remember that day that was one of the hardest days in my life holding him down for them to do a bone uh, bone marrow biopsy on him and um, sure enough two and a half hours later they came in and sat us in a room and said we're sorry to inform you that your son has leukemia and we're going to keep him here um, for a few days and it, actually I think it was almost a week week worth of testing and uh, to figure out a protocol, and it was just, you know, I mean, it was just a uh, obviously a major, a major hit, and uh, we, we we didn't know what was happening, kind of in shock, and um, it was, uh, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how this happened and and what we we're going to do about it. Patty, uh, as a as a mom, uh, asking the question how you feel is 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 not very sensitive, but how how does a mom deal with hearing? that diagnosis when they hear it about their child? Well, it was terrifying for me. Um, you're immediately scared you're going to lose your child, which you never think in a million years would happen to you. It always happens to somebody else. So it was devastating to, to us, our whole family. But we did what we could do and got the best doctors to treat him and you know, which they started treating him immediately, and uh, it was mostly done outpatient. He went through several um, 
uh, spinal taps, and he did great with those. The doctors would tell us to keep him quiet and we, when he got home, you know, let him just lay on the couch all day. But every time, as soon as we got home, he wanted to go out and play. He wanted to go out and play baseball, and so we let him, and he did great. You know, it was he did great throughout six months of chemo. It wasn't until his last, <clears throat> excuse me, his last round of chemo that really hit him hard, and he got a cold, which turned into pneumonia. And with that, he was in the hospital for two and a half weeks, and 10 days of that was on life support. And unfortunately, he got aspergillus pneumonia, which was really from the treatment, from the chemo. It wasn't even the leukemia. Mm. So he basically died from the treatment for the leukemia. That is so hard. And as you tell the story this many years later, I know it feels like it was almost yesterday. It does. It never goes away. I still have a hard time talking about it. Well, thank you for wanting to come in and share this with us because your story is a story so many other people also go through. And every year when I go to the outing and they show a great uh, movie about Joey and his struggle and, and how Joey's been the inspiration for the Joey's Angels chapter of the Leukemia Research Foundation. I'm touched once again very deeply and also inspired by the fact that you took this very, very difficult time in your life and you decided to do something to make a change, to fight blood cancers and leukemia. First of all, tell us how that transition happened, because that couldn't have been an easy one. Well, we knew we wanted to do something to memorialize Joey and for everybody to remember him. And <clears throat> Larry's a big golfer, so we decided we would try doing a golf outing. So we contacted the Leukemia Research Foundation and said we wanted to start a chapter. And this was only a month after Joey had passed. So we got busy with that, which really ended up being a lifesaver because my older daughter, Alyssa, who was five at the time, was just starting kindergarten, and I was left home alone, mm. you know, just not knowing what I would do, how I would survive. Right. So this really helped me survive by keeping me so busy and focused on his memory and a way to find a cure or better treatments so other people wouldn't have to go through what we went through. It was actually good therapy for us is kind of what I tell people. And you were able and have been able, because of this, to keep his memory alive for so many years. How many years ago did you start the outing? 1997 was wow. our first one. And tell us what that first outing was like as compared to the ones ever since. Larry, you can you can tell me. Well, everyone, uh, you know, when we first started this thing, um, everyone said that we, we'd be lucky to have, you know, maybe 50 to 100 golfers and uh and our family and friends were great. Our, my company, FH Passion, um, you know, was great uh, getting involved, too. And uh, we, we kind of surprised the, the, that current board of directors at the foundation that year and, and brought 420 golfers, and mm -hmm. we raised over $100,000 that first year. And I still kind of remember the director at the time telling me, why are you giving away such nice things? You know, we, we've been to golf outings before. You know, we'll give them a hat and a T-shirt. And I said, hey, I've been to a bunch, and... Uh, you know, if you want people to come back and support this thing on a yearly basis, you got to you got to you got to treat them right, and, and you got to make it nice and special because there's there's so many uh, worthy causes out there. And then uh, if you want to have people come back and support yours, you you got to treat them right and make it nice. And uh, after that first year and raising a hundred thousand dollars, the the board pretty much let us do anything we wanted from that point on. I'm sure they did. And boy, you guys have really made a difference over the years. In the many years that you've been doing the outing, you've raised now $2 million for the fight against leukemia and other blood cancers? Actually, two point, almost $2.1 million. That is incredible. When you think about that, can you believe you've come this far from 1997? No, it is hard to believe because I thought we would only do it for a couple years, and then I wanted to stop because it was so much work. But then it was hard to give it up once we saw the response. You know, we would say, okay, this is the last year, but then on the day of that event, it's always magical, and you could always feel, I call it Joey's energy, mm -hmm. and everybody could feel it. And then we'd raise so much money, so it was always hard not to say, okay, we'll do it again. <laughs> It's been a wonderful way to keep Joey's memory alive for all these years. And this year's outing is happening Friday, July 29th. I'll be part of it. The drive will be part of it. Uh, 
Larry, tell us more about what this year's outing has to offer. Well, we're actually bringing it back to where we started it back in 1997 up at Midlane Country Club up in Wadsworth, and we added a second course, a uh, place called Glen Floor in Waukegan, which uh, we didn't even know existed at the time because we uh, um, we were having it, uh, we only had it at Midlane, and uh, we actually turned people away that first year, so we then expanded it to another public course up in Beach Park. So uh, this year we're bringing, going back to where we started, and um, hopefully we'll have uh, two full shotguns and then everybody would be coming back for uh, dinner at the Midlane uh, Resort. And you do have great prizes as you mentioned. It's uh, hard to find a better group of people than the people that are involved with the Angels in the Fairway Golf Outing every year. And you mentioned briefly the company you work for, uh, FH Passion Construction Company. I know they've been a major backer of yours and of LRFs over the years. And I think it's very important to mention just how key it is in the fight against leukemia and in being able to do uh, something like this, to have partners and friends and volunteers and employers who are supportive. Yeah, I've been with Passion for now over 30 years. And, and um, they've been very supportive and very loyal to uh, to myself and Joey's Angels and, and all the workers. And, and all of our subcontractor base and vendor base have been very loyal over the years. And like, like Patty says, it's kind of like it's always been kind of like a family reunion, you know, once a year. And uh, I think it's been a great, great thing. I, I think it's um, great for the community, too. And uh, we can't uh, thank Passion and, and all of our vendors uh, and subcontractors enough for all their loyal support over these going on 20 years now. Well, we'll get this uh, website out there again later in the show. But just for now, in case you want more information about the golf outing, you can go to joeysangels.com and get it. That's uh, July 29th at Glen Flora or Midlane Country Clubs. I'm Kathy Voltmer, and you're listening to the Making a Difference show on 97.1 FM, The Drive. Our guests today include Larry Mix, president of the Joey's Angels chapter of the Leukemia Research Foundation. He's also uh, president of the board of directors of LRF. His wife, Patty Mix, is here as well, as is Kevin Radlett, executive director of the Leukemia Research Foundation. Kevin, you mentioned before that there's been some success with uh, treating some uh, pediatric uh, leukemia. And uh, there's actually been quite a bit of success in uh, the fight against this disease. Well, actually, there has. Um, in 1962, for example, if you were diagnosed with leukemia, uh, you only had about a 14% chance of uh, surviving five years. Now, for all types of leukemia, which, of course, there are four different subsets, major subsets, but the five-year survival rates for all leukemias right now combined is right at about 60%. So, obviously, that's very encouraging. The same thing with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, 1962, it was a 40% survival rate. Now it's almost 90%. So there are some great stories of success. We are making progress. Um, we, we have to continue to fund medical research because that's where the progress comes from. That's where you find out what the causes are. That's where the treatments can come up with. We work closely with different pharmaceutical companies to get involved with what they're doing so that we can share that information with our patients that are involved with the organization. So there has been tremendous progress, um, not only towards the ultimate cure, but in the treatments as well. And we do put on a number of educational programs throughout the year on a complementary basis so that we can share that information with people who are living with a diagnosis right now. Mm -hmm. I know that Larry and Patty have gone to some of those uh, continuing education programs. How important is it for patients who are living with a diagnosis to hear from a family who's been through it? Well, I, I think it's uh, I think it's critical. I mean, I, I know um, I've met several you know several other families you know through this, and um, it 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 helps it helps me again. It kind of helps uh, with the therapy, and I and I think I, I've been told by several other people at these functions that uh, that our story has helped them has helped them get through the thing and um, and deal with it. Like um, like you were saying, as far as the the um, the percentage, I, I still remember them coming in and telling us that Joey had about 65% chance mm -hmm. of survival. But uh, it was probably a month or two later that we really realized that when they said survival, it was really only of five years. You know, I thought that meant forever. And you, when, when they tell you it was only five years, I said, oh, my God, you know. So, so um, you know, it was so that was kind of, again, more inspiration for us to continue this and, and try and help other families. Can you believe all the money you've raised over the years and all the help that you've been able to be for for this very important fight. 
Well, it, it definitely is incredible to think, um, you know, over the 20 years, it, it basically turns out to be about, it averages about $125,000 that we've raised. And, uh, I mean, that's that's a huge amount. And um, like Patty said, it, it is a lot of work. It's basically planning a wedding, you know, every <laughs> single year. So uh, I think my next line of business is going to be event planner. Um, I, I keep on telling Patty we'll start our own business after I retire from passion. That's perfect. The Joey's Angels golf outing is a cause near and dear to my heart, but the Leukemia Research Foundation also sponsors a lot of other events over the course of the years. The various chapters have events. Just recently here, The Drive uh, sponsored the ABC7 Gibbons 5K in Grant Park to benefit the Leukemia Research Foundation. Kevin, tell us how that went. Oh, it was a tremendous success. It's an annual event that we do at Grant Park with, as you mentioned, with the tremendous support of ABC7 and The Drive. Um, we had about 2,000 participants that came down for our 5K run, 3K walk, uh, right at Columbus and Balbo. And it was um, Janet Davies and Frank Matthew from ABC are the honorary co-chairs, and they televised the start of the event live during the 6 p.m. newscast, which not only helps us create excitement and to get people to participate, but it helps us, as does all the work that The Drive does, with getting out the word about what we're doing, not just our organization, but the need, the urgency, to really become supportive of the things that we're trying to do to serve our mission. So that certainly is one of our signature events, as is Joey's Angels Golf Outing, and uh, it went very well this year. Good. What other events should uh, our drivers know about that the LRF sponsors? Well, there, we have events going on throughout the year, not just fundraisers. We have, as we mentioned, some educational events, but um, obviously you can go to our website, which is allbloodcancers.org, and we have a full listing of events that is updated on a daily basis that that residents and, and supporters around the Chicago area can get, get involved in, um, large to small. You know, Larry and Patty's golf event is a huge event, uh, several hundred people. We'd love to have as many people out there as possible. It's on a Friday, a uh, great summer day. But we have things, you know, we have bowling. We have ski trips in Colorado. We have basketball tournaments. We have semi-formal galas that are just, they're more fun than stuffy, as we like to say, <laughs> um, because we like to keep the fun in fundraising. But there's a number of events that uh, people can always, uh, again, visit our website at allbloodcancers.org and, and learn about what we're doing each and every day. Uh, not only are there a, lo a long list of events you guys are sponsoring, but there's also a really comprehensive look at all of the programs and all of the impacts that the Leukemia Research Foundation has had on this fight. I was just uh, on the website this morning uh, ahead of this interview, and it's just it's really hard to believe. I mean, things like uh, volunteerism, you guys use volunteers as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's our our chapters are all volunteers. I mean, that, you know, we talked about Joey's Angels and they're reflective of 24 chapters that we have here operating in Chicago that have been touched by these blood cancers. As Patty said, part of their motivation is that they want to find a cure mm -hmm. so that ultimately other people don't have to experience what they've endured. And there's other uh, volunteer chapters, volunteer families that are doing the same thing with their different events. And it's really, it's an amazing, truly an amazing organization made up of volunteers that are doing this in any walk of life, be it your job, be it your hobbies, be it your relationships, be it your family, you have to have a degree of passion um, that, that you want to give back that really drives you. And I think there's there's three things that, that really drive our, our families. Number one is patience. You know, they're, they want a cure and they want it now. So it does taste, test their patience. But you have to be patient with anything in life if you want to see it through. Secondly, you got to believe in what you're doing. And they absolutely believe They've been there. They've walked in the shoes. They believe that what they're doing is going to ultimately bring us to a cure. And thirdly, they never give up. So when you can approach something with patience, belief, and never giving up, then you're ultimately going to win out and you're going to be proud of your activities. And what these families do to help lead us to find the cures and treatments for blood cancers is truly amazing. And as you said, if you just go to our website and you learn about the volunteerism and the events we're doing, it, it's really a great story. And we'd love to get as many people involved as we possibly can. And if volunteering personally is not your cup of tea or golf isn't or you don't want to do a 5K walk, um, there's always a need for 
financial donations. Absolutely. And we are very proud that some of Chicago's uh, largest employers, smallest employers, all types of corporations have been supportive of us, not just financially, which of course is, is the key to everything we do, but they also are very good in coordinating volunteer groups to support the events we have. We had several small groups uh, working, volunteering at, at, at Gibbons, for example. We'll have quite a few that are working at the Joey's Angels event. So, um, yes, the involvement of corporate community is very important to us, um, and as well as, of course, the individuals. Well, speaking of individuals and individuals with patience and passion and the drive to never give up, Larry and Patty Mix really are emblematic of that, uh, and they have come to this place through a very difficult journey. Uh, I think before we go, because we only have a couple minutes here before we wrap up, I I'd like to hear from you your advice for other families who are dealing with this very difficult diagnosis. Patty? Well, like Kevin said, you need patience. Um, yeah, do your homework on blood cancers and leukemia. Um, find the best doctors, research the treatment options. Mm -hmm. Really, that's, that's my advice, and try and keep everything as normal as possible for y your family, for your child going through it. How about you, Larry? What would your best advice be? Well, get involved, I guess, and, and and along checking out, like Kevin said, the, the website's got a great great uh, information on it. I remember calling all kinds of friends and and researching that, and and having them put us in touch with other hospitals across the country. That those first two weeks, our heads was were, were spinning, but it all boiled down to you know he was going to receive the same kind of treatment, and uh, so we decided here obviously to stay in Chicago and uh, you know the choice back then was either Children's or Luton General and we said well if it's gonna be the same treatment why drive downtown so we picked Luton General because it was closer to us um, but basically get involved get involved and um, like Patty said we we wouldn't we didn't want to stop them we didn't want to stop them from going outside and um, so uh, we let him live the life that he wanted to live, and um, you know we, we did the best that we that we could, and um, it, it just didn't work out for us. But it's it's working out for a whole lot more people now. So um, and um, and it's, it, it continues to be good therapy for for us. It really does. Yeah, you've kept his memory alive with this uh, terrific event that uh, goes on every year. Kevin, before well, we go, is there very any... very quickly, advice yeah. on behalf of the organization. We're, we're thrilled that we have doctors from, from Northwestern, from Loyola, from U of C, from Rush, all very involved with our organization at our different educational programs that we do. And the resounding thing that we hear from them each and every year when they talk to the patients is, if, you're, if your doctor tells you not to get a second opinion, get a different doctor. Mm. There is a ton of resources available through organizations like ours. In this particular market, we have some of the brightest and best researchers and doctors. And please give us a call, visit our website. But as Patty said, do your homework. The information is out there, and we're happy to direct whenever we can. But uh, keep in mind that we're in a great market when it comes to treatment from, for all medical maladies that there may be. But for, for, for blood cancer, um, there are some of the best in the world right here in our backyard. So patients and families that are dealing with this diagnosis should know that there is hope uh, and they're not alone. You've been listening to the Making a Difference show on WDRV Chicago. I'm your host, Kathy Boldmer, and if you'd like to join me and join the drive at the 15th annual Angels in the Fairway Golf Outing on July 29th at Glen Flora or Midlane Country Club, you can get more info or register at joeysangels.com. You can also always contact me at the radio station or via my Facebook page. I'll be happy to give you all the details. And if you need more info about the Leukemia Research Foundation and its program, or if you'd like to volunteer or if you'd like to donate, it's a wonderful cause, go to allbloodcancers.org. Larry Mix, Patty Mix, Kevin Radelet, thanks so much for joining us and thanks for all the wonderful work you've done over the years and continue to do in the fight against blood cancers. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. And thanks so much to everyone for listening this Sunday morning to the Making a Difference show on 97.1 FM, The Drive. <laughs>